Hey guys, it's Brian here. Obviously we're not in the uh, gecko lab today. I'm out here with one of my good gecko friends. We're at a uh, in Glenwood Canyon. We were just hiking up Hanging Lake. Um, Catherine here is all the way from England. She was in town and nice enough to give me one of her vacation days. Over the last couple videos I've done, I've dropped a couple hints about a new project that we acquired that I haven't really talked about and I know a couple people have been asking. I've been keeping it secret for a lot longer than most people know and I actually got the project from Catherine. So while she happened to be in town from England, I thought we'd do a quick video and she could kind of tell you what it is and how we came to get it and what we plan to do with it. Okay. So why don't you tell them about it. Thanks, Brian. Well, um, Brian uh, approached me maybe a year and a half ago now because he was interested in some animals that I posted online. Um, I can't remember when the first one hatched out, but I noticed that it was a little bit different to all the others. And uh, it actually hatched out black and white. And uh, from that, another five hatched out. And uh, eventually, you know, Brian was giving me a lot of support uh, before, and then he asked me whether or not I'd be interested in selling him them, and it's actually the, the Grey Gecko project. I messaged her about it, asked if she'd be willing to sell them, and I was promptly told no, <laughs> there's not a chance. No, well. And then she's, she's too kind to say it, but I uh, kept bugging her for about a year and a half until we finally worked out a very long, very complicated deal. She happened to be in town, so I thought we'd make a quick video with Catherine. We are going to drive back to Denver, and then I'm going to make a second half of this to actually show you guys the animals and introduce them a little bit and kind of go over the guidelines of what projects we have and what we expect from it. And with a little bit of luck in a couple of years, we'll see some pretty good results. Yeah, and hopefully, I've still got the foundation pair, so hopefully we'll have a few more hatch out this year. She did. We got most of the project from England, and then the, the original parents of the entire thing Catherine still has. So. For those of you overseas as well, they will be available eventually in England and Europe from her and then of course on the US side over here. So anyways, thank you again thank you, for Brian. working this out with me. I couldn't be more excited about it and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Great. Hey guys, we made it back down from the mountains. We're back here with the geckos and there you have it. The Grey Gecko Project. We could not be happier to have the opportunity to work with this new morph. It's certainly the biggest news, the most groundbreaking morph we've seen since we started breeding crested geckos, probably ever. Uh, first off, we want to send another huge thank you to Catherine, not only for coming down and helping us with this video, but just for giving us the opportunity to work with these animals. We couldn't be more thrilled about it. Catherine was absolutely amazing to work with to work out this deal. Um, she still has the original founding pair in England, the original pair that produced all of the gray ones that we see today. She still owns in England, so she will still be producing them in the UK. And then everything else from the project, all of the offspring so far, we have here in Colorado now. So we'll be working with the rest of those. Now what I think is going on with these, they've been known as the gray geckos, the gray project for a while. What's really going on here is it's a simple si simple recessive mutation called azanthic. We see it in ball pythons as well as a couple other reptiles have this morph. Now what azanthic means is they are incapable of producing yellow pigment. That's why they turn out very monochrome, very black and white colored. I have one, a couple of them here today to show you guys and kind of give a little example. Now this here is Alaban. This is my favorite of the greys that we have. He is one of two adult visual azanthics that we have here that we got from Catherine. Now if you look, the majority of the, the crested geckos we see, the t color on their tail as well as their harlequin patterning and their pinstripe patterning, it's all, we refer to it as white. We say we have a black and white or a red and a white harlequin. In reality, it's cream colored. There's all a a number of yellow or other colored pigments mixed in and it's an off-white or an egg-white colored at best. With these guys, since they can't create yellow pigment, their cream color on their tails turns out pure white, liquid paper white. It's because there's no yellow so the yellow can't turn that to cream like it does with most of these animals. You can see even their eyes are monochrome gray, their tongues are monochrome gray. They're very interesting looking. Now number of the projects we have ready for these guys. 
We've already been breeding them with pinstripes, harlequins, extreme harlequins, and patternless yellows. Uh, the harlequin projects, obviously we're looking to get harlequin markings on the sides of these and also see if we can make harlequins. All five of the visual grays we have so far are patternless gray. A number of their non-visual siblings are indeed harlequins. They have all that pattern on the side. So we're almost wondering if there's something with the azanthic gene that combines with the harlequin gene that mutes it out so they can't be harlequins. They do, however, you can see on him, he does have a little bit of color on his pinstripe. So I'm convinced if we breed these with pinstripes, the white pinning will show up here white. Whether or not we will get harlequin markings on them is yet to be seen. One of the many things we're going to breed for. Now, one, another one I have here to show you guys is the, the one adult female that we have. We also got this one from Catherine in England. Now, she's a lot lighter than her brother. She fires down almost translucent color. She's almost purple when she's completely fired down. She's very light colored. And then this is her fired up. You can see she is also gray. Almost the same color as her brother, a little lighter. She's got the same mutation showing. Same really, really white tail. The fringe on the back legs is pure white. Again, patternless though. And her we bred to a solid yellow pinstripe this year. With obviously the idea being, we want to find out what happens when we make a solid yellow gecko that's not capable of producing yellow pigment. That could be very, very interesting looking. We've got a couple ideas what those might look out, turn out to look like, but we're not going to say it just yet until we actually hatch one and see what they do. Uh, availability for these guys, because it's a simple recessive trait, they do take a little bit longer to reproduce. You can't reproduce them in one generation. It takes at least two generations to reproduce a recessive trait. So it's going to be a couple years before we have any available. I know we're going to get a lot of inquiries. It's going to be at least 2016 before we have any available, probably late 2016, maybe earlier that year. So it's going to be a little while, but it's going to be really exciting to breed these into a lot of different morphs, see w what they do, how they combine with other morphs and other traits, and see, see what pops out of the egg, see what we come up with. There's never been anything like this in Crested Geckos before, so we are very excited to see what happens, what they do. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching again. Keep an eye on our Facebook page. We're going to be posting lots of pictures of all the azanthics that we have posting lots of updates about them. That's the best way to keep up on all our projects. Visit our website for available animals. We're going to be launching a brand new website here very soon that's going to have a whole page dedicated to these guys, the history, what we're doing with them. Everything with these guys is going to be on the website as well. And also, please comment down below. I would love to know what morphs you guys think these would be mixed best with, what you would like to see us do with them, how you think they're going to interact with other morphs, and if you had one, what would you do it? What would you breed it to? And what would your project goals be? I would really like to know what you guys think and your thoughts on that. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have a lot more videos coming. And once again, thank you for watching.